Hi, George here, and today I'll be showing you how to remove a background from a picture just like that, leaving the subject in the foreground alone. This is great if you want to come in and put a different background on your picture just like that. Now I'll be showing this in Photoshop Elements 2025, but this basic technique works in earlier versions as well. And if you just upgraded to Photoshop Elements 2025 and you want to get more training on that program, learn everything about the program, I have a complete training course for this, and I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Okay, the first thing I'll do is go back to the original image, just the background image. Let's just get rid of this, close that down, and I'll open up the original, which is right here. I'll put the link for this image in the description if you want to follow along with this video. I'll also be putting a quick step-by-step -step instruction for this and the finished working file inside of the Photoshop Elements Photo Coach program. There's a link for that in the description as well if you don't happen to have that. Okay, our first step here is to remove that background from the dog, and that means making a selection. Now in Photoshop Elements 2025 and the last couple of versions as well, go up to Select, come down to Subject, and then Photoshop Elements will go in and find that subject for you just like that. It's that fast and easy. If you have an earlier version of Photoshop Elements, let me just deselect that, Control D to deselect that. If you have an earlier version, then you'll have to make the selection in a different way. And the standard way is to just grab a polygonal lasso tool or the regular lasso tool and make a careful selection around your subject. You may want to do this anyway. It's up to you. It doesn't matter how your selection is made. It's just real fast in here. This is one of my favorite techniques because it is so quick. And straight around and back to the start again. Notice that we're not up against the dog. We can clean that up by coming down here to the refined edge. I'll leave all the settings at their defaults. And I have my view here set to overlay, which is just the easiest one to use. And you can see the size of the brush right there. Just come in and brush right along the edge like that. And then Photoshop Elements goes in and does a much better selection for you. Notice that the plus sign is outside of the edge. And I'm just pushing the brush just a little ways into the foreground subject. We'll lose a lot of the whiskers. There's no way to solve that because they're so thin, they're down to the size of a regular pixel, so they'd be lost anyway. But we'll keep a bit of that and just brush clear around. And then just go clear on the whole image this way. And you'll have a really good selection once that's finished. I'll do this one, and then we'll go back and do the fast, easy way here for Photoshop Elements 2025 and recent versions of Photoshop Elements. This is how I used to do this for years and years. And it's not that difficult, as you can see. It goes pretty quickly. Go clear it back down to the bottom down here. And same thing, I'm just doing this in little short strokes. There we go. Once that's done, Come down here and output to selection, choose OK, and there's your selection. Control D to deselect. Let's go back to how I would normally do this here in 2025. And that's just the select menu, subject, and let Photoshop Elements do all that work for us. But there is one thing I'd still do on this. I would still come in and use the refine edge. With the dog, you're going to have some thin hairs along the ears, across the top up here, and of course these whiskers. We want to make sure we get as much of that as we can, so the Refine Edge tool is what we use. Same exact trick. We just don't have to do this along the whole subject, but only along where the hair may be showing up a little bit, get a bit of that hair showing out on the edges in there, and along the whiskers, just in case. We're probably going to lose those, but we'll get as much as we can. And then down along here, there we go. The problem with losing the whiskers is that they're just too fine to be worked with a mask. It just loses them automatically. Same thing, Alpha 2 selection, and there we go. That's a pretty good selection on that one. I'm going to back up one step here. Here we are, and let's talk about coming in here and using the Output 2 options down below. We have several options in here. Selection gives you a basic selection, which is oftentimes what you want. If you're going for a layer mask, though, you can come down here to Layer Mask and do that instead. Or you can make it onto a new layer that's with a selection. Or you can save a lot of time by going here to New Layer with Layer Mask. This is what I normally choose. 
especially if we're working here with a background layer. I like having the background layer untouched. So making a new layer with a layer mask solves that problem because we then have a new layer. We'll see that in just a second. Notice that you can take this out to a new document if you want to, actually a different file or a new document with a layer mask. So you can separate that out. Again, very useful at times depending upon your project. But for this one, we'll go to the new layer with layer mask, click on that, choose OK. And here's our new layer with that layer mask. Notice it also automatically hid that background. So you can see the background again, there we go. And you can hide that background again. Now I want to put a new background in here, but I don't want to hurt this one. So I'm going to right click on this and duplicate that layer. There we go, that gives me a copy of that background. I'll leave that one hidden. And the reason for that is I'll be coming down here to the graphics and then we're in by type up here and backgrounds. And we can find a new background in here. And the reason why I made that duplicate, let's see here in just one second, let's just change this to this brick wall. There we go. If we go back here to layers, you'll see that the background layer has now been changed to that brick wall. So if I didn't make a duplicate, I would have lost the original image. So keep that in mind. If you're coming down here to graphics and using one of these built-in backgrounds, it's going to replace whatever your current background layer is. If you want to have a few choices in here, what you do is just what we did up here, right click where it says background, duplicate that layer, choose OK, hide that layer. We now have that one saved. Okay, let's go back down to graphics and I'll show you the one that I used at the beginning. I'll just scroll down just a little bit. Notice that most of these have these little blue triangles upper right hand corner. When you install Photoshop Elements, it doesn't install all these backgrounds. These are all still up online. There's just these little thumbnails in here. If you want to use a background, you click on it and then Photoshop Elements downloads that to your computer. And that just saves you a lot of space. There's no reason to have all these things on your computer. You're probably never going to use most of them. So it saves you a lot of hard drive space. If you want one, just click on it and you'll then get that downloaded and then it's on your computer from that point forward. So that's what that little triangle is about. Okay, scroll down a little bit further here. There we go. There is that fence that I chose. Click on that one. And there it is, looks good. Now, one thing about this fence, notice that right here, there's a crack in the fence, which looks like it's coming in out of his eye. And I think that's just kind of odd looking. So let's fix that. Now, again, I like to protect my images. So if I'm ever gonna be doing anything on the image, I'm going to right click on that, duplicate that layer, choose OK, and I'll work on the duplicate and save the original, just in case. Let's hide the dog. We're here on the background copy. Notice over here, right hand side, that little icon right down there, it looks like a stack of papers or something. That means that this is a smart object thumbnail. And that has a certain amount of protections on it so that it can't be edited directly. So what we need to do here to make this fix is to right click on the name and come down to simplify layer. And it's now just a pixel layer. And we can now edit that. So let's make our selection right over that little crack. There we go. Go up here to edit, come down to fill selection. And in here, you want to sit on content aware. Blend mode should be normal and opacity should be 100. It should already be set at that. Choose OK. And then Photoshop Elements goes in and fixes that for you. Control D to deselect. That's been fixed. Let's now bring our dog back on again. And there we go. Perfect new background for our dog photo. Let's say you want to use a different photograph in here as the background and not one of the built-in backgrounds. That's just as easy. Let's just bring up another file up here. And I have one right here in my recently edited. Just a background picture like that. Now I have this in here as a floating window. If you haven't seen this before, go up to edit, come down to preferences and general. And this that option right over here, allow floating documents in advanced mode. Make sure that is checked. Choose okay. You can then float your window. And the reason why I did this is I can then just grab that background up here in the layers, drag it into this photograph, and that changes that in. It brings it in as its own layer. And let's just position this correctly. There we go. It's a little bit small. So I'll use the control T keyboard shortcut to bring up my control handles. And I'll stretch that picture out just a bit so it fits better. There we go. And there's our new background from a photograph. So you can either do a background like this, just bringing in a picture, or let's just get that out of the way. You can come in and just use one of the built-in backgrounds that come with Photoshop Elements. And don't forget, if you want to learn everything about how to use Photoshop Elements 2025 or any version of Photoshop Elements going back several versions, I have a great video training course for Photoshop Elements and a brand new one for Photoshop Elements 2025. And there's a link for that 
at the top of the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Also, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And when you subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos as they go up. I'm doing new videos all the time. And I'll see you next time.